Hong Kong, AP, Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam said Monday she wouldn't seek a second term after a rocky five years marked by huge protests calling for her resignation, a security crackdown that has quashed dissent and most recently a COVID-19 wave that overwhelmed the health system. Her successor will be picked in May and the city's security chief during the 2019 protests is among the possible choices. I will complete my five-year term as chief executive on 30 June this year, and I will also call an end to my 42 years of public service, Lamb said at a news conference. She thanks her team of local officials and the central authorities in Beijing, and said she plans to spend more time with family, which is her sole consideration. Speculation had swirled for months about whether she would seek another term, but she said that her decision had been conveyed to the central government in Beijing last year and was met with respect and understanding. Less than two years into my chief executive term, because of the anti-extradition bill and because of interference from foreign forces and also the attack of COVID-19, I was under great pressure," Lam said. However the motivation for me to press on was the very staunch support behind me by the central authorities. She presided over a period in which Beijing firmly established control over the former British colony that was returned to China in 1997. For years, the city rocked back and forth between calls for more freedom and growing signs of China extending its reach into the city, even after Hong Kong was promised 50 years of freedom to govern itself semi-autonomously from the mainland. Lam's popularity sharply declined over her five-year term, particularly over legislation that would have allowed crime suspects to be extradited to mainland China for trial and later over her leadership during the 2019 protests. The mass demonstrations were marked at times by violent clashes between police and protesters. Authorities insisted foreign interference was fueling the movement, rather than organic local activism, while protesters denounced police actions as excessive and said the violence and seditious claims were attempts to undermine the pro-democracy cause. She also strongly supported the national security law initiated by Beijing and implemented by her government that was seen as eroding the one country two systems framework that promised after the handover from Britain that city residents would retain freedoms not found in mainland China, such as a free press and freedom of expression. The security law and other police and court actions in the years since have virtually erased the city's pro-democracy movement, with activists and the movement's supporters either arrested or jailed. Others have fled into exile. Hong Kong media say the city's number two leader John Lee is likely to enter the race to succeed Lam. Chief Secretary Lee was the city's head of security during the 2019 protests and is known for his support for the police force during the protests and his tough stance against protesters. Hong Kong's leader is elected by a committee made up of lawmakers, representatives of various industries and professions, and pro-Beijing representatives such as Hong Kong deputies to the China's legislature. One of the unfulfilled demands at the 2019 protests was direct election of the city's chief executive. The election for the chief executive had been set on March 27 but was postponed until May 8 as the city endures its worst coronavirus outbreak of the pandemic. Lam said that holding the polls as originally scheduled would pose public health risks even if a committee of only 1,462 people is involved. Hong 
Hong Kong has reported nearly 1.2 million cases, 99% of the during the fifth wave driven by the highly transmissible Omicron variant. It has strained the healthcare system, with hospitals at times placing patients on beds outdoors. Nearly 8,000 people have died in the latest outbreak, and mortuaries operating at capacity have used refrigerated containers to temporarily store bodies. Lam's government has been widely criticized for flip-flopping policies, including mixed messaging in February and March on whether a lockdown and compulsory mass testing would be implemented. The uncertainty sparked panic among residents, who cleared out store shelves to hoard daily necessities. The plans for compulsory mass testing were dropped and Lam last week urged all residents to test themselves with rapid antigen kits between April 8 to 10. She later said the exercise was voluntary as it was not possible to enforce. Lam, 64, previously served as Chief Secretary and Secretary for Development and in other civil service positions. She earned the nickname Good Fighter for her tough stance and refusal to back down in political battles. Lam renounced her British nationality in 2007 when she was appointed Secretary for Development. Her husband and two children have retained their British nationalities. Underscore. Sue reported from Singapore. AP writer Ken Moritzugu contributed from Beijing.